Not long ago, a manufacturer contacted me and said, hey, would you be willing to put our Boost Ready Power Adder Short Block up on the dyno and run Boost? Do they even know me? Don't worry, I'm a professional. In this video, I took a 408 stroker from the guys over at ATK. When I say I, I mean they sent it to the editor of the magazine. The editor of the magazine brought it to me and said, hey, can you configure all this, make it work, do all the dyno testing, give it back to me, and then I'll go take it to the guys from ATK and get all the credit. But I ain't bitter. Actually, this is from my boy Steven Rupp over at Super Chevy Magazine. 100% awesome, and I love doing the dyno work. It's my jam. So I took the ATK short block, assembled it all, and put it together with, the, with a LS3 cam, a factory LS3 heads with a spring upgrade, and configured it first with a dual plane intake. Now I started with the dual plane, then installed a single plane, then did a cam upgrade, then installed a fast LSXRT intake manifold with a Holley fuel injection, then installed a Pro Charger, then added more boost from the Pro Charger. Sounds like a lot of stuff. We should get going. Before we get to our results, we need to take a look at this clip. Now what the clip doesn't show is, important safety tip, use good couplers. Don't use a coupler that's designed for the inlet side, the non-pressure side of an air intake system when you're trying to run boost, especially when you're trying to run a lot of boost. Now, I was able to clamp this coupler in place and make it not come off, make it not blow off. But guess what happened? It just blew the coupler apart, it just destroyed it. So I had to install an aluminum elbow and clamp everything together to finish the test. Important safety tip, use good couplers. Okay, I was pretty excited about this one. Uh, I like it when people send us stuff to test, even though they didn't send it to me, they sent it to the editor, and then I end up doing all the work, which is totally cool. This was an ATK 408 LS Stroker short block. It was a power adder deal, so it had forged rods, forged pistons, and it had a dish piston in it. I think it was a 29cc, so it was a pretty heavy dish. That's gonna bring it down. You know, it's gotta be like in the nine to one range for, for this combination. To get things started, we installed a factory LS3 camshaft because we wanted a starting point before we did our cam upgrade. We also configured it with factory LS3 heads just out of the box, no porting or anything. It did have a dual spring upgrade from Brian Tooley Racing. We also installed, to get things started, a dual plane intake manifold from Holly and an 850 Holly uh, XP carburetor, long tube headers, you know, inch and seven eighths swap headers and we ran it with the uh, MSD uh, conversion for um, the ignition conversion box. So equipped like that, our 408, our low compression 408 boost radiator power adder stroker produced 446 horsepower and 477 foot pounds of torque. And the first thing that we did was install a, we replaced the single plane or we replaced the dual plane with a single plane intake. That's an easy swap. So here's what happened when we installed the single plane. Now this is pretty typical, whether you do it on a small block Chevy, big block Chevy, small block Ford, whatever you do it on, the single plane, dual plane deal usually is some kind of trade off like you see here. There's usually a crossover point, can be higher or lower than this, but this is usually what happens. The single plane makes more power at the top and the dual plane makes more torque down low and wherever the crossover point is gonna be determined by how much cam you have in it, what the displacement is usually, things like that. So equipped with a single plane, we made more peak power, even with that stock LS3 cam, 465 horsepower. Peak torque was 469 foot-pounds, but as you can see down here in the 3000 to 3500 range, there was a big loss in power, and that's kind of typical of a single plane. So. This is what happened when we ran these carbureted intake manifolds. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we installed a better camshaft in the factory LS3. After comparing the single plane and the dual plane, right now we have up on the graph, we have the single plane. And remember when we ran our dual plane, we had this kind of crossover. So the, the dual plane made more power down low and less up at the top. But what we did now after installing the single plate intake is we did a cam swap. So we replaced the factory LS3 camshaft and installed a much healthier comp cam. And this is what happened. 
So this comp cam was a 54-470-11 cam. And I'm going to put the specs up here, but what we're looking at is a 621-624 lift. 235-251 duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And as you can see on the 408, uh, it was a, it's a good size cam, but it picked up a ton of power. I mean, the peak power jump from 465 horsepower to 554 horsepower. So that's a pretty big jump. And you can see even down at 3000, it didn't really lose any power. So on the 408, it really needed a better camshaft than this. I better than the factory LS3 cam, obviously, which was designed for the 6.2 liter, not for a low compression power adder 408 ATK short block combination. So, but the LS3 did okay, and you know, if you wanted that kind of thing, you, you have that. But as you see, almost any kind of camshaft that you put in here, you're gonna have a big power change. And this was only a, a you know, this wasn't that big of a cam. There's certainly more, and there's a lot of room. There's a lot more piston to valve clearance, so you could run an even wilder cam combination. And this is with the single plane intake. So after we ran the single plane intake with the carburetor with the 850 XP, we decided to swap over to fuel injection. So we installed the fast LSXR intake with the 102 millimeter throttle body. So after installing the fast intake manifold, here's what it looks like. So the extra runner length on the fast, and this is pretty typical. This is a lot like our single plane dual plane combination. The fast LSXR intake um, improved the power output through most of the curve all the way up to about 6,000 or 6,100 RPM. Then the single plane was actually maybe a touch better there. If you look here in the 4,200 range or so, there's a gain of, uh, let's see, 20, like 27 foot pounds of torque or so. So that's a pretty sizable gain there. You'd definitely be able to feel that. And obviously, you know, you guys can argue all you want about the drivability between the single plane carburetor and EFI, but basically, you know, the EFI probably would work a little bit better for most kinds of street application, but the carburetor works too. And especially at the top end, it pulls really hard, works good on that single plane intake. So now let's take a look and see what happened. We continued our testing with the fast manifold. Now let's see what happens when we add the Procharger Supercharger. Obviously, good things. So after swapping over to fuel injection, we had obviously had the Holly HP management system on it, and we switched over to the fast EFI. And I think we had 89 pound injectors in this thing. You know, it was in the 553 or so horsepower range, 529 foot pounds of torque. It was doing really well, but we decided we needed to make a, obviously a lot more power of this. And since we had a boost ready short block, why not actually add some boost to that, which is exactly what we did. So we installed a Procharger, centrifugal supercharger, along with a matching Procharger air to water intercooler. The intercooler was fed dyno water, which at this time, the testing was about 80 or 81 degrees. So here's what happened when we installed the Procharger, and it was an F1A supercharger, not an F1A94, which would have, was capable of making even more power, but we were just looking to get to around 1,000 horsepower, which this one was able to do. We equipped the F1A Pro Charger with a four and a half inch blower pulley, so that's a pretty big blower pulley. And here's what happened. I mean, look at that kind of power gain. That's, <laughs> force induction is awesome. So on this ATK 408, equipped with the Pro Charger, it made 931 horsepower and 828 foot-pounds of torque, so it was doing really well. I mean, that was a big jump. We were getting really close to what we wanted out of the power. So we decided we had to do what everybody else has to do when they do this. Okay, we're at 930, we need to get to 1000. I mean, the easiest way to do that obviously is to raise the boost. Now, I think all of this testing on the supercharge application was run on E85. So let's take a look and see what happened when we installed. What we did was put a 4.13 pulley. We replaced the 4.5 with a smaller 4.13 inch uh, pulley, and that just spins the blower faster, so it makes more boost and more power. So here's what happened when we put the 4.13 pulley on. We were able to reach our goal of 1,000 horsepower. We also started to get into a little bit of belt slippage at the top here. You can see that the power curve is kind of rolling over. And you'll see when I show you the boost curves, the same kind of thing is happening. So equipped with that 4.13 pulley, it made 1,016.8 horsepower, so 1,017. And the peak torque was up to 938 foot-pounds of torque, so 
you know, <laughs> more than enough torque. Certainly a usable combination. We're on an E85 with 21 or 22 degrees of timing. This thing could go out and run on the street like that. And this would obviously would be a, a pretty healthy candidate, especially because this thing had, as we mentioned before, it had a 70cc chamber and a 29cc dish in the piston, so the compression was very low. It was kind of set up for boost. With this pulley, the Pro Charger made a peak of about 17.5 or 17.7 uh, pounds of boost. We'll take a look at that with the boost curve just in just a second. The combination worked. We reached our goal. We made 1,000 horsepower. We showed that that ATK 408 boost ready short block was definitely boost ready and could survive this kind of stuff, which is not a big surprise given the forged internals. It worked well. We are also on this combination. We ran a smaller Torque Storm supercharger on it. We ran nitrous on it. So we beat the heck out of it pretty good and it came through with flying color. So uh, my hat's off to the guys at ATK. Obviously they know how to put together a short block. And if a guy's looking for something, he could look at their stuff. It works pretty well, obviously. Now let's take a look at the boost curves and then I think we're good. We'll go over these real quickly. This is the boost curve supplied by the Pro Charger F1A on that ATK 408 with the LS3 heads. This was equipped with a 4.5 inch blower pulley. So you can see we started our run down at 3,700 RPM and it was making 5.9 pounds of boost. Out here at the top, we were looking at 14.4. As you can see, it leveled off here at the top. That's probably the belt starting to slip a little bit because normally what you see is a nice uh, straight linear curve unless the blower is running out of power and we'll know from the pulley change whether that was happening or not and it doesn't look like that it was so I think that that's probably the belt starting to slip a little bit let's take a look at see what happens when we installed the 4.13 inch pulley where it made over a thousand horsepower raise the boost everywhere start it off down here at 3700 at 8.1 pounds and rose to a peak of what's showing 18.2 there okay nice 17.9 there, okay, but you can see up here from about 6,000 on out, we've got a little bit of a dip there. I think that that's gonna be belt control right there, happening the same thing. Like I said, the curve should be nice and straight going out in a nice linear fashion, should continue to climb. So probably a little bit of a belt issue, but even with that, we were able to make our power goal of over a thousand horsepower. We actually able to do it at a fairly low uh, RPM level, because the thing with these centrical superchargers is the boost continues to climb with RPM as long as the blower has uh, enough capacity to support that boost level and power level at that RPM level. So these are the boost curves. We made over 1,000 horsepower. Things worked out pretty good. Let's get to, get to the conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think? What did you think about this supercharged 408 stroker combination? I mean, the ATK stuff obviously worked. We were able to exceed 1,000 horsepower with no problem. And actually we ran this with a bunch of other stuff, a smaller supercharger of nitrous. We really beat the heck out of it. Hey, it worked pretty well. I know what you're thinking. Yes, I can go down the wrecking yard and get a 5.3, I can put cams and springs and some cheap eBay turbos and make all this power for 25 cents. Yes, we know that that's possible. And that's definitely a route a lot of guys take. But there are some guys that don't want to go this junkyard route. They want new stuff. They want stuff with forged internals. They want to do it right, and they want to know that it's going to work. And if they can afford it, more power to them. And the ATK stuff seems like a good option. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Come on, help me out so I can keep doing these videos. Thanks for watching.